For Louisiana versus all y'all, Jarrett Roser here with 2025 standout Jace Thomas of Destrahan. Versatile two-way standout for Destrahan. We'll talk about some of that, his experience playing a variety of positions for the Wildcats so far, uh, as well as you know a lot of other aspects of him growing up, the, the son of an NFL player, Fred Thomas, former New Orleans Saint, to where he is now with this Wildcats group that is fresh off a state championship. And I think in a in a lot of ways, their their mindset very quickly turned to let's go get another one uh, with with guys like Jace still on board for what is another talented Destrehan roster. Jace, what's going on, man? How's everything going as we get closer and closer to August now? Everything's great. You know, we keep putting in hard work, trying to get closer and closer to our you know final goal. What about you? Yeah, man. Good. I mean, same same sort of thing, just bouncing around, trying to keep up with you guys. Uh, in in the heat of the summer, seeing y'all at some camps and seven on seven and whatnot. Um, and let's kind of start there. You mentioned the work and just prepping for what will be your junior season. What did this off season look like for you? Take me through it a little bit. Were there big priorities for you from an individual training standpoint? Just kind of what was the energy um, and an agenda around some of your work and some of what you and the Wildcats were trying to accomplish together as a team? To get prepared for this upcoming season, there was a lot of blood, sweat, and tears to get where, you know, where we got to be. You know, um, us being one of the best teams in the state of Louisiana, we have to work harder than everybody else. So I definitely think we're one of the hardest working teams in Louisiana, no doubt. No one works as hard as us. No one wants it as much as us. And it took a lot of preparation just for me personally to get where I am now, you know, after practice, I'll go to training. Before practice, I'll be at training. Before practice, you know, I'll just be on my own thing, just trying to get myself mentally ready for what's uh, what's about to come in August. So I, that's that's all I really do as far as preparation. You're a guy that, whether it be in the, the high school context or camp or seven-on-seven, seven, we've seen – play some wide receiver, play some DB. You have some quarterback background um, earlier on in your high school career too. What is your outlook for, for this season? Just when you talk about the work you're getting in, what are you preparing for in terms of what role or roles are, are on your plate right now? My dad always tells me he wants me college ready in high school. So when I get to college, I'll be NFL ready. So as far as that, I kind of like, you know, I kind of like just feed off that, you know, because my value as much as much as the team could value me, they could put me anywhere on the field, you know, so, they, you know, just in case someone else is on the field, you know, I could be here. I could be a receiver. You could put me everywhere. So that that's what's really good about me is my athleticism and that I can play multiple multiple positions and still fall out. So we may see you in a variety of roles on some Fridays here pretty soon. Yes, sir. What's that like from a work standpoint to just kind of juggle it and make sure that that you are ready? You, you've got athletic traits that lend themselves to to picking up things easily and doing a variety of things. But in terms of hammering in some of the technical side, the skill set in, in some of these different areas, how do you juggle that and make sure that that you're ready to roll and, and be at your best in – you know, into three, four different positions, potentially, if it comes to it? I have to make sure I'm physically and mentally prepared for, you know, just being on the field and the mental mindset of being tired. I have to make sure my body is ready to be, to continue to go, even though that I'm tired. Like, I have to make sure my, my body's that way, my mind's mentally that way. So even if I feel tired, I can still push that one more, you know, that one more yard, that one more inch. And that, that plays a big role of how we work at Destin. We've mentioned now a couple times your dad and and that relationship and some of his advice that you just alluded to or mentioned flat out him telling you in high school, we're getting college ready. In college, we're getting pro ready. What's What's it like to be a young guy growing up with a dad that reached the highest levels of of this sport, just take me through some of the early memories, which you saw. I think you would have been either very young or not even born yet when he was wrapping up with the saints, but I'm sure you had a chance to, to get to some events or, 
or meet some people or hear stories about him and his playing days. Take me from kind of the early stages of your realization of, oh, sh- oh shoot, my dad did this thing and and just sort of uh, some of those early memories of that. Um, When I was younger, you know, it was always, you know, football. I played every sport, but it was always just football. But as I got older, I started to be, you know, more football excited. I only wanted to play football. I grew up having a football in my hand. So football's always been my favorite sport, and he's always pushed football towards me, you know. And um, being his son, it's not easy. You know, you kind of got to be – I always have a chip on my shoulder. Everybody wants to go against me. Everybody wants to, you know, embarrass me. So I always have to be ready for what's, you know, coming or what's in front of me. It's not easy being, you know, that that person that everybody wants to, you know, just, you know, like embarrass or do things like that. So having a chip on my shoulder definitely pushes me harder, makes me work harder to make sure none of that happens. You know, that's it. Do you remember realizing that that dynamic of of other guys recognizing, oh, he his dad was in the league. He's somebody that I, I can kind of go against and is going to be good competition or I can make a name going against or whatever. Was that something that you you first were kind of prepared for by him telling you, hey, look, there's going to be big expectations that come with this name? Or did you see it in action actually for the first time and kind of realize it as you're out there going against some guys? I realized it in eighth grade where a lot of people, you know, they expected to see me. They wanted to see me perform. They wanted to see me play. And it, that, that just made me work harder because, you know, you never, want to, you never want somebody to see you at your lowest. So that that eighth grade summer going into high school, I was at quarterback. I worked, 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 worked. And then, you know, I made a position chance to receiver. Um, Coach Scott was – he seen my future at – DB, Coach Scott and Coach Robbie Green. They see my future at DB. I switched. Um, this is my first year playing DB. It's actually one of the best switches I've ever made. And I don't regret making it. Those two coaches are, they played a big factor in my recruiting because without them, I, I wouldn't be where I am right now. So I, I give a big thanks to Coach Scott and Coach Robbie Green. Have there been any specific challenges for you with that transition that it's just, you know, some area or another has been the biggest, the biggest adjustment for you to make on that side of the ball more, or has it all been, I mean, feeling pretty smooth, feeling comfortable from, from the outset? Everything's been comfortable. I just had to work. I had to work, 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 work until I felt comfortable. You know what I mean? Um, You can't really, play football and be the best at it without work. You got to work. It takes a lot of blood, sweat, and tears to get where I am right now. So it's, it doesn't stop. I just got to keep going. And the first six offers come all in the span of two weeks in May, Ole Miss, Troy, Tulane, Colorado, Arkansas, ULM. So clearly some of that next level potential, several colleges, not just in state, but around the country have started to take some notice of Take me through that stretch. The first one is Ole Miss, where dad played part of his college career right there in the area that that he grew up in. Talk me through that day, picking up an SEC offer right off rip, and then the fact that it doesn't stop. One comes after another, and and you're sitting there with with six uh, as as you finish up your sophomore year of high school. How did that How did that day feel with Ole Miss, and how did that stretch feel to to have them all? come in such quick succession during spring ball getting my having my first offer being an sec offer was is, it was crazy definitely like overwhelming it, it surprised me you know because you know when you're on the field you're not really expecting you're just playing ball you know you're not really expecting to get this get that your head's just locked in and focused on what you got to do so having that being my first sec offer and being where it's from and my dad being alumni from there, it's kind of, it was crazy and it was mind blowing because, you know, it's just my dad's old stomping ground. So, you know. Did you spend much time out there when you were younger? Did y'all get, get up to Oxford very much? Are you pretty familiar with that place before going to visit more recently? 
I visited before I had the offer one time. It was a game visit. It was Ole Miss versus – it might have been LSU, a big, really big game. Um, just watching from the stands, it wasn't much of a visit. It was just a game to yeah. go to, a really good game to go to. Just checking out the the game and the atmosphere and all that sort of stuff. Yes, sir. Did you grow up watching a, a ton of – whether it be Ole Miss or LSU or another program, did you have a favorite school growing up that you watched on Saturdays or not necessarily? Or did you have favorite players you grew up watching potentially, whether it be college guys, uh, other NFL guys, guys from the area that you looked up to? Take me through some of those early teams or athletes who caught your attention and um, and you kind of looked up to. I never – had a favorite college or NFL team, but I've always had a favorite player, J.C. Horn from the South Carolina Panthers. Um, he's always been like my little mentor. I've always like mirrored him and watched his film and kind of like adjusted my game off of it. And he's always been there to like help me. We talk, we train together. So he's like, he, he pushes me to be harder, pushes me to work harder pushes me to be tougher and working around guys that have made it and know the struggle and know the hard work that you have to put in to make it. It helps me, you know, get my mind ready for what's about to come in a few years when I have to go and make my commitment to go to college. Is JC a guy that from a young age you knew because of the, the dad's connection with the saints when, I mean, is that like a lifelong person that you've, you've had around? JC has always been around since I was young. He's watched me grow from when I was young, since Mr. Joe and my my dad were close friends and they lived around the corner. So it was kind of easier for them two to click. So it only made sense for me and JC to be on the same page. And when I made the position switch, he, he was all about it. He loved it. How's How's Pops been feeling about seeing you more on the defensive side of the ball? He loves being able to see me on the defensive side of the ball because he can get more involved in, you know, what I'm doing. And it's it's fun for him because every time I touch the field, there's not one thing that my dad doesn't know. As always, he knows the coverage. He knows he knows what's coming based off of the formation. Like those type of things help me get prepared to for film study and helps me pick up stuff on teams easier. It helps me get their weaknesses just based off how they come out the huddle. Nice. Have whether it be him, obviously his his recruitment would have been in a, a different age of of recruiting. The the way that some of this goes now has grown so much. I uh, just with I mean the internet and social media and and all these things. But whether it be him from his days going through recruitment or other guys that he's played with and and knowing what they went through or from JC or, or, or older Destrahan guys, what has been some of the advice that you've gotten from these, these mentors or former teammates that are now at college or any of the, the older players in terms of just how to manage this, how to take some of these offers, um, how to, you know, navigate some of the, the visits or conversations or, or camp circuit or whatever, what's been some of that advice you've gotten as, as more of this picks up for you? Um, first off, it's always stay humble, stay humble, keep your head straight. And they always told me that, you know, every coach that they, they want you, they want you. So you always have to like introduce yourself and make yourself known, let them know who you are. And, Take every visit and enjoy it because as of right now, I'm still in the recruiting process. So I'm not, I haven't really thought about anywhere as far as commitment wise. So as I said, enjoy it, keep my eyes open, keep my options open and just make sure, you know, I'm getting my full experience until I really have to, you know, level down to about five schools and commit my senior year. Where have you had a chance to get to so far? I know Ole Miss you've you've been to. We even talked about before the offer, you had a chance to get up there for a game. LSU, I know you've been up there. Um, Alabama, you've you've been to Tulane, obviously, right there in town. Are there some others that you've already had a chance to get to, whether it be for visits, uh, camps, just kind of passing through uh, anywhere else? 
I've been to ULL, South Carolina. Um, I've been to a few other schools. I've been to Alabama. I think you said that. Uh, mm -hmm. Florida. And uh, that's all I can think of besides all the offers and the visits and stuff. What's it like seeing some of these places as you get a chance to go to different places for the first time, see the facilities, meet the coaches, um, any, any big takeaways or interesting stories or moments that, that stood out of, of kind of like, you know, wh wow, I'm a guy that's going to be at one of these places in a couple of years. This is, this is kind of what that next level is going to look like for me. Every school, when I get there, they treat me well. They always treat me with um, respect, like, you know, like I'm one of their guys. <clears throat> so it's always good to go to different schools and experience that. Every time you step on campus at a different school, it's always like, wow, like it's different. Every school has something else. Every school has like an eye opener as soon as you get on campus. And as soon as you walk in on campus, as soon as you walk in on that locker room, it's always like you're a part. They make you feel a part. And then being able to put the jerseys on at some of these places, and seeing how you look, it makes you wonder, like, how would I, how would I look here in a few years? So that that's a good experience for me. What have the coaches that have offered had to say so far about what stood out at an early point in your high school career that caught their attention, made them want to make that move at this point, and how they see you projecting with them? Is everybody looking at you as as a safety at the next level? Just any, any of that sort of stuff that you're hearing from coaches about what stood out and what they see for you long-term? Coaches love how versatile I am. They like that. They like the fact that when I get to college, I can either be put at safety, receiver, on the defensive side of the ball, or I can go to receiver or quarterback. Wherever they feel like they need me, that's why it's good to be so versatile. And I think – most colleges see me as a cornerback. I'm lengthy, fast, good ball skills, which is I have no problem with. I'll play anywhere on the defense. And schools really love the fact that I will play anywhere. And being able to, you know, slow the game down and keep the game slow, it makes everything a lot easier when you step on the field and it's 7 o'clock p.m. What do you hope the college coaches are leaving an interaction with you knowing about you? Not necessarily they've they've flipped on huddle or they just watched your camp performance, but when you have a chance to have some actual conversation and, and chat with them a little bit and they know who you are a little bit, get you know, build that rapport with you as a young man. What do you hope that that they know or that anyone that meets you knows about just what you bring to the table other than just, you know, a a long fast athlete that's been around this game and, and has a good feel for it and can go make some plays just a uh, young man jace thomas who do people need to know one thing that i really really want all these coaches to know that i'm willing to do anything for the team and willing to put everything on the line right there for my team no matter it's special team defense offense field goal or anything so that plays a big part on everything. Coaches really like the fact that I'm a vocal person. So if I see something wrong or if I see something right and I encourage teammates or things like that and I have a question and I speak about it, coaches like that. They like to see me ask questions. They like to see me talk on the field. They like to see me communicating and lifting up other players. So that's what they like about me the most. Good deal, man. Well, I appreciate you taking some time to to chop it up and and update us on how everything's been going. Thank you. Thank you. And I meant to tell you at the beginning, too, happy belated birthday just a few days ago. Uh, I hope you had a great week celebrating that. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. You got it, man. Again, he's Jace Thomas, 2025 standout. We talked a lot about that versatility that he brings to Destrehan and wherever he ends up at the next level. Those first six offers coming in May from Ole Miss, Troy, Tulane, Colorado, Arkansas, and ULM. And I'm sure many more to come here sooner than later. And for Louisiana versus all y'all, Jarrett Roser.